Hey guys, it's Jaeger262 back again with another Armored Warfare Vehicle Showcase. And now that I finished the French line, I didn't really know what to do, and so I decided to start covering one of my favorite lines, and not even the whole line, just this one vehicle, which is the Zofong Light AFV Support Vehicles. And the reason I say light is because as you get down the line, they become quite heavy, but you start with the O82, which is this tiny Jeep, and which goes to the OT64 Cobra, and the BVP M2, then you get to the heavy Rosamalk, Rosamalk Mark 1, the WP Anders, and it's absolutely one of my favorite lines. I loved the Tier 4. I absolutely adored the BVP M2. It's one of the greatest AFVs at Tier 6 you can get. The Rosamalks both get Peli, and the tier 8 one gets striker missiles so they are just it's a formidable line it's one of the greatest AFV lines added to the game it's all about quick hard hitting light support however at tier 5 you had this the OTC 64 which was a joint Czechoslovakian and Polish AFV which is why it's perfect for where it is in the line because you start with three Czech vehicles and then end with three Polish vehicles so it's perfectly balanced, kind of in the middle. And it was built between the 60s and the 70s. It's still used in some places today, it, but it's a pretty old AFV. And it is one of the worst in Armored Warfare. It is an absolutely hated vehicle, hated more than the ZBL-08 of the same tech tree. It is terrible. Nobody really plays it. And all those rumors and all those things about it, and just looking at the stats way back when, when it first came out about a year ago, or, sorry, not a year ago, beyond that. Um, I didn't want to play it either, so what I did is I just kind of free XP'd my way th around it. I went straight into the BVP because it was pretty great. And because of that, it's the only one of the vehicles in that line that I didn't play, and I want to know what makes it so terrible. So, today's showcase is just going to be a little bit about why this tank sucks, or, sorry, why this AFV sucks, if it sucks, or if it's just difficult to play. Because a lot of the AFVs, you have to you have to give them their own play styles. So, it's a weird line. Like, this doesn't play anything like the OA-82. And it doesn't play anything like the BVP, I'm sure. The Rosamok didn't play like that vehicle. The Rosamok Mark I, surprisingly, played a lot differently than the original Rosamok, it was more aggressive. And so each one of the AFVs in the line, instead of you're learning how to play these fast, hard-hitting AFVs, you're kind of getting a feel for it, like the BMP line or the BMD line, but it's different. You're not getting a feel for any of these vehicles as it goes up. Maybe that's why the line was so frustrating for some people, is that none of these vehicles played like the previous vehicle. They all played like individual vehicles, and you have to play them that way, which is why I enjoyed it. And so I want to see, is this vehicle really that terrible? I pulled up a quick comparison to show you that, on paper, yes, it is that terrible. It has the lowest damage of all the Well, I don't have every tier 5 AFE on here, just some of the best that I own. Certainly the two French ones, the MX-13 being the best. Has the lowest DPM. Has the lowest damage. Has the lowest rate of fire has the lowest armor next to the VBL, which obviously has no armor. It's It gets 95 kilometers an hour, which is pretty good. Uh, it's got an impressive weight range. It's light, it's fast, because it's a wheeled AFV, so that's not a problem. Camouflage is the worst. U range is actually the best. The range is actually the best, and its maximum deviation is also the best. And that's why I kind of wanted to do this showcase, is because when you're looking at it, it's a vehicle that can move fast, and that's it. Can't do damage, can't take hits, can't do much of anything, but it can move really fast, and it can spot further than most AFVs. And so, I think it's meant to be played kind of like the first Rosalmach. Not just support, but sniper support. And that was what made that vehicle so successful, and I never saw people play it that way, so I might do a showcase on that. That AFV was 
an expert at sniping, like a tank destroyer. And I feel like the OT-64 Cobra might be as well. So we're going to try and do a PvE game and a PvP game just to see how it performs. Right now, I believe I have it at a stock loadout with no missiles. Hold on, let me change that. Did I not? Let me unlock the missiles real quick. Because there is no reason not to have those. So everything else, I'm just going to leave stock except for adding some missiles to it. Full complement of 50. Wow, that's pretty good. Mm, I don't like to play my AFVs with too much high explosive because unless you're hitting a lightly armored target, it's kind of useless. So I usually set up my AFVs like this. AP and then missile. And I keep it on a constant cycle just like I do with the French tanks. So before I get into gameplay, I just want to show you the armor model because it's one of the most ridiculous. This thing was nicknamed the bus or the school bus when it first came out because it's just this really big vehicle that you can't hide. And unless you reverse into battle, you're really not going to be able to do much. You got a wall here, you got to shoot a target, you're going to have to pull all the way out, for example. It's just too long. It's like a BTR almost, which Armored Warfare hasn't put in the game for some reason. Maybe it the failure of the OT-64 is why BTRs won't show up. But of course, no armor. 15 millimeters in the front, 21 on the side. You can kind of angle it. 34 millimeters of armor is the best you're going to get. So pretty standard AFV for this line. I just, until I play it, which I'll show you, I can't explain why people hate it so much. So stay tuned for the PvP game and the PvE game coming up next. Thank you so much for watching. I'm afraid the cartel has gotten their hands on the warehouse full of chemical warheads. Who knows where those things will show up if we don't take them away. Please take control of the warehouse quickly. There are also some missile launchers located in the area. salvo on a hydra we are the only two five and while well, it's probably just the time of playing more than anything else it's important to remember that at tier five if you're an afv player you're going to see more tier six and pve than tier four it's just usually how they want to balance it because tier fours would have no way to compete with the auto now it's not always the case again during prime time play hours you will be able to get matches of all kinds. I'm playing at night here on the east coast of America, so these are six point high tier for me. And as you can see, Hydra's never good at the opening but um just an 19% camera or not 19 sorry. Target down. Not adequate enough. We were spotted all the way in the back. Literally A7 and we've already lost all of our hit points and team hasn't even been able to move out past the UMB. Okay, penetrated! What do you think you're going to play? Target destroyed! PvP, which you'll see, and it does not perform well there. And it is very true here. You lose those hit points fast. That 650 does not last for any amount of time in any game. So, this is a vehicle that will take a lot of learning. You're really going to have to put a lot of time into perfecting how you play this. Um, it's, in my opinion, not a vehicle that conforms to any playstyle readily. Uh, I'm trying to play it a little bit like a Rosamond because it's the closest thing I could think of to this, a long auto-loading AFV, but it's not really working. And like I mentioned earlier, that line kind of 
that weird gimmick to it where none of the vehicles really play like each other. They're all quite unique. But that is very true for this vehicle. It's going to be difficult for tier 5 players to be competitive, to really make this vehicle work for them. And when I do my PvP, we'll be talking about this and how just like the French tanks are really, really good for a few good hours in this in PvE to get a feel for it, because it's the only way you're going to this practice. But when I said that, the French tanks, as you saw, absolutely dominate in PvE, so it's easy to learn them. This vehicle doesn't really dominate. Identify target. Also, PC. He gets himself into a lot of dangerous situations. And there's no real easy to pass. No It's almost like it's too little too late, it doesn't really do anything to the vehicle at this point, just because of the way it is in the game. Try not to move up without me. Yeah, there's not much else to say in terms of review, it's just... People said it was bad for a reason, and I think it's one of the big things about armored warfare is with the balance of vehicles. It's a lot of people can have sort of similar experiences oh, okay. in them and trying to understand them holistically, which will help new players interact. You know. Other games, you can talk to hundreds of players about a vehicle, get it, and it'll be nothing like what they describe. Or, or all 100 players. <laughs> I feel like, in general, you can get a pretty good view. And because of that, the amount of people who avoid playing this vehicle, right, it is difficult. It does punish you for playing it. I'll post a piece of I think I have one. 
Yeah, that'll give you another thing that makes this vehicle so fast. Nobody wants to hear that that's been my experience. And again, I'm not gonna hear it. But it's doing okay this game. 7300 damage, while low for a tier 5 AFV, is decent given the vehicle. Like, normally I say, oh wow, man, given this vehicle, <laughs> that's pretty good. But I think it's appropriate. I honestly think it's appropriate in the Cobra's case. It's just it's just that hard to play and that easy to kill. Now a big I help is definitely oh, bring okay. this. Definitely bring a repair kit with you when you play this vehicle. It's twenty four thousand credits if you don't have a couple already in your inventory. But it'll be worth it. general and again you'll see this in pvp stay out of the combat zone and do not rely on your atgms don't rely on your camo factor don't rely on your sp well only rely don't rely on any of those things only rely on your sp view range and your auto cannon those are the two things that are going to keep you alive both in pvp and pve this is a very difficult tank to m work with. We did 40,000 credits this game and 7,600 damage, which is really great because I thought we were gonna, I was going to get destroyed right in the beginning. But even with that, it only puts us in second to last place against the tier 6s. It's a very difficult vehicle to learn how to play. It's very unique. If you're grinding this line for the first time, you have to be patient with it. Uh, it's an easy vehicle to hate, but I think with enough practice and enough time, it could be rewarding to play and it could teach you a little bit about how to be a passive scout, which is a weird concept in PvE, but it's pretty much how all AFVs play at PvP, so play it how you want to. But as far as it goes personally, I wouldn't recommend this vehicle to anybody who hasn't played AFEs a lot. If you don't like AFEs, don't play this vehicle. If you don't like this line, just avoid it. Just avoid it. Don't get it. If you do like AFEs and you want a challenge, this is the most challenging AFE I've ever seen. So it depends on what you want to do. Stay tuned for the PvP gameplay and see how it performs. If not, thank you so much for watching this far. All right, so I got two short PvP games from River Point right now. In a favorable matchup, we're in the bottom tier, but there's actually more tier fives and tier sixes here. So when I first started playing this, um, this particular replay, I had already been on River Point and I had gone to the normal sniping position and tried to use this AFV as I described in the review as a sniper. Oh, I knew this was incredibly ineffective. Um, the ATGMs, if they're firing at anything above tier 5, or even at tier 5, are completely useless at uh, sniping. Frankly, you have to flank. And so I went into the town to see if I could try and get some auto cannon damage done. And there's two Amex 40s entering the town right now, and I thought I could get the drop on them. With my U range, I can outspot both of them. What I forgot was that once you're in a city, it doesn't really matter how good your view range is, everybody can spot everybody. And so as you're about to see, I'm just going to miss this first shot, because they're too close. 
privacy so I get spotted. And I fire. No and I don't actually hit its target. Identify. Never mind, I didn't miss. I thought I did. And I'm sure it's one of the positives. This is the only That's pretty much it. We're done. Um, I just keep the recording going so that way I can see this AMX 40 guy. But that's about all you can do. And there was another game where I was able to go to a T-72. The missiles are completely useless at mid to end close range. So the reason is because of where they're positioned, they already sit right on top of the turret, which is already really tall. So they need a few seconds to get down. And you'll see when you shoot the missile, it kind of just drops and then goes. But in that game, we did 1,700 damage, which was pretty all right. For this, it's the best I did all day. I played about six games of this, and I can see why people don't like it now in PvP. And even with that 1,700 damage, we're still almost last place, right in the middle of the team. So, not really great. And the next one, I think we do a little bit better in terms of experience, but it's pretty much just as short. We're on Plethrin Cena now, right? Yeah. And at first I forgot where I spawned. This one I do sit back and try to snipe. I was trying all day long, this is the last game I played, to see if I could make this an effective TD esque sniper, like a BMP or a BMD. And in this gameplay it uh it actually works out pretty well for me. But again, doesn't last long. This tank survivability, like most AFDs, is ridiculously small because it is such a large target. As you can see, our little OA-82 is just rolling around out there. He's going to do a lot of help for us towards the end of this game, but we can't do that. That's another thing I emphasized a little bit in the review, and you can see where the missile launcher is here, and that's why you have to be where that castle is. That's a good distance. That far away is a good distance to use the missiles on the OT-64. And so that's kind of where we are going to spend most of our focus. We're going to put most of our focus. It's over there on that mountain. And that's about all we can do. We can't maneuver as quickly as other AFVs. We don't have any turn traverse because it's a wheeled vehicle. And so it's really hard to get out of certain situations. And because of that, you, once you get spotted, you will die. So don't get spotted. That's what happens to me at the end of this game, you'll see. I get spotted once, and immediately I get completely destroyed. I don't get hit once, and then the other times I get completely destroyed. Alright, see? That's a 716 damage hit. That's about mid-range for these ATGMs. And no problem. You saw it dip right at first when we launched it. You saw it dip down. It needs the time to do that. If you don't give it enough time or if you fire too close, just like the Rosa Mach Mark 1, it will just go straight into the air. And you'll lose guidance immediately. And for an AFV at Tier 5, I will say this about the OT-64. It does have really great ATGM control. And so... This is the only game that I played PvP wise where you'll get to see that. But it's not bad. Not bad at all. It's quick to fire and it's auto cannon. It won't work against the Merkava, but I thought maybe. Is actually, even though it has the lowest penetration of all the AFVs, when it has the Sable rounds in it, you can. Just like you saw on the top of the shirt, you can pen the lower plate of most tier 5 MPTs, and of course you're going to pen the sides. Now that's not because the OT-64 is actually better, that's a change that Armored Warfare made in the 0.28 update, which is another reason why I'm doing these vehicle showcases, it's because how you play them is going to be different. They updated how auto cannons work, and they gave them closer to real world penetration values. So now the side of almost any MPT is completely vulnerable to auto cannons of a sim of the same tier of a higher tier which is great um, not great if you're in an MBT I suppose but it's good for people like us who play AFV vehicles a lot 
So I've been having a good time with that, and it honestly saves vehicles like this one. Because as you saw, I was able to do 1500 damage almost entirely with the auto cannon last game. And I'm going to secure this Merkaba kill with the auto cannon. It's just things that you wouldn't be able to do before this update in these vehicles. However, that's the only good thing that happens. That's the problem with sniping with ATGMs from that far away. Sometimes your ATGM will hit a target after it's already died, so there's nothing you can do about that. Identify. This is the part where I make my mistake. I overplay with the Zalo, and I go a little bit too far, and before my ATGM even really launches, I'm already dead. I mean, that's that's kind of how this that's kind of how the Cobra works. Is if you're spotted, you're dead on arrival. It doesn't matter where you get spotted. No matter who spots you, you're gonna die. And so that's why I can see why it's a frustrating tank or AFD rather to play. I think personally that as far as PvP goes, this is not a vehicle you should play unless you're really used to AFEs or if you really like them. Which I do, it's just going to take a lot of practice for me to make this vehicle work in PvP. I would not recommend this to beginners, I would not recommend it for casual players at tier 5. Because um, you're probably going to end up in the same boat as the majority of players in Armored Warfare. Just absolutely hating it, hating the grind, wondering why it is where it is. And just having a bad time. So, once if you do decide to play this vehicle or purchase this vehicle and you want to go up the line, I would put a lot of PvP hours into it. Just play against the bots, even if it gets repetitive and boring, until you really know just what its limits are. Because it is. That was unforgiving. In that one second, that was one second, I lost all my hit points and was hit four times. One second, and so that pretty much end that ended that game for us. And these were the two best games. These are the two best games I could get today. Were um, relatively quick. Fifteen hundred damage, sixty thousand credits, twenty nine hundred XP. Not terrible, actually. I it's a pretty good take for this vehicle in my opinion, considering how little it can do. But again, it puts us to the bottom half of the team. Throw up a like if you enjoyed the video, or subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I have a few more vehicle showcases planned. I'm not really sure which ones I'm going to do yet, but stay tuned, and thank you so much for watching.